Brandon Watson. All right, so when this film was first announced, a lot of people were just filled with excitement. Some people were nervous, like, no, why are you making this movie? But how did I feel about it? Well, let's talk about it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Just My Opinion for my movie review for Coming to America. And if you happen to like this video, please give me that thumbs up and consider subscribing. So guys, you know that with any film or form of entertainment, your expectations are everything. If they're through the roof and you're let down, you're going to walk away disappointment. But if you go in with your expectations low and you still happen to have a great time, I mean, hey, you had a great time. No harm, no foul. And going into this, my expectations were very, very low. I mean, I love the first film like everybody else did. I mean, I can't speak for other groups, but I can say with confidence that the original 1988 film Coming to America is in the top or I might as well say probably the number one most beloved film in the whole black community. If you feel different from that, please let me know down in the comment section below. I mean, it came out in 88. I was only four years old at that time. I think my parents actually took me with them to go see this in a drive through and I was in the back seat not knowing what's going on. I have to ask them about that, but I'm pretty confident that that is true. But I did go into this film with my expectations extremely low. I did want to be entertained, of course, but I was just saying, okay, look, it's not going to be as good as the first film. I know that it's just not, and I'm not knocking any of the creators, but I still want to be entertained. I still want to have a good time. But before I get into the nitty gritty, let me tell you what this thing is about. The African monarch, Akeem, learns he has a long lost son in the United States and must return to America to meet this unexpected heir and build a relationship with his son. So guys, I'll go ahead and get this out of the way. And by now, I'm probably sure you've already seen the film. But of course, you may agree this film is not as good as the first film. I don't think many people expected it to be. But for me personally, it wasn't remotely close to being as good as the first film. I think the sequel right here was completely unnecessary. Um, it doesn't hold a candle to the first film at all. And I think this was just a waste of time and a waste of money. Now, that does not mean that I did not have a good time because I did at a few key points. I did have some laughter. I did chuckle here and there. But for the most part, I was very annoyed with this. And let's just go towards the title. I mean, coming to America, there just wasn't really any coming to America in this film. It was very brief and I'm not going to spoil anything for you here. But really, how I feel about this movie is it's not a movie. It's not a movie at all. It's not a sequel. What this is, is a reunion of characters that we known from the first film in forced cameos. And that is just highly disappointing. I mean, there was not one cameo in this movie right here. So I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm glad this person is back. It just all felt very, very unnatural to me. And that saddens me. It, it, it really, really does. And even when the film first started off, when we get the first opening shot of Eddie Murphy, I kind of said to myself, oh gosh, this is going to be horrible. Because I mean, he was in on the joke. When we saw the first film, Akeem, I mean, like the first film is just shrouded in silliness. I mean, silly is coming to America's middle name. But at the same time, you still had a core story and characters that you cared about. And there was genuine love and passion in that film. I mean, he was really a fish out of water coming to America. And it was genuine. Of course, there was a ton of jokes. And like I said, it was silliness all over the place. But there was also a, a good amount of seriousness in its foundation. And there was no seriousness to this film and the sequel coming to America. It was just a bunch of silly jokes. It was a bunch of caricatures like we got in the first film. But if you don't have a nice story, you know, to flesh that out, it kind of just falls flat to me. And that is the case with this sequel right here. And it is very, very disappointing. I mean, Eddie Murphy, Akeem in this film, he is not the same character that he was in 1988. In this film, to me, he was just Eddie Murphy and changed his voice here and there just a little bit. And, you know, I don't even like the way that this film was shot by Craig Brewer, who did Hustle and Flow that came out in 2005, which was a great film. 
And when I heard that he was attached to direct this, I was like, okay, hey, I'm a little skeptical about things, but you know, this film is in good hands. You know, I, I have no problem there, you know, but I think a lot of the shots, you know, that he came up with was part of the problem. You know, it just, it just felt like a set. It didn't feel like a movie. It just didn't have that, that same gravitas, you know, that the first film had. And that's just unfortunate. I mean, at one point, Ryan Coogler was attached to this film in some capacity and did pitch his idea to Eddie Murphy and Eddie Murphy didn't like it. He didn't want to go with that. And I kind of wish that he did because what we got here just kind of felt short to me, in my opinion. I mean, to me, all this film is is a rehash of all the great things that came in the first film that's not even as half as good. I mean, we get everybody back. You can see it in the credits. You can see it in the trailers. Randy Watson, you know, the Jewish guy at the barber shop. I mean, the, the whole bang, the whole shebang, everybody comes back. You know, and at one point I was excited, like, okay, hey, I know this character's coming. It's about to drop. And then when he came out, it, just, it like I said before, it just kind of felt short. It just wasn't the same. It did not have the same energy. I did not think Michael Blackston's character or Wesley Snipes' character was funny at all. I mean, it was just really over the top. And Wesley Snipes, to me, is a great performer. He is a great actor. And he does have great comedic chops, in my opinion. But this right here was just, like, silly. And I, I mean, I'm guys, if you get to know me on a personal level, I'm seriously one of the silliest people on the planet. I mean, sometimes I can't help it how silly I am. That really doesn't come out of my reviews because I'm trying to do a review. But I mean, I love silliness. But this silliness in this movie was just like, you know, immature. It was dumb. It just wasn't funny. I mean, it, this was... I, I, I mean, it's even hard to describe, but I, I mean, I just found myself frustrated a little bit while I was watching this movie. It came off as a spoof, you know, and I love my spoof comedies. I mean, taking it all the way back to Airplane and Naked Gun 33 and a third with Leslie Nielsen. Rest in peace, my dude, you know, but you have to have balance. You have to have a, a good mixture. And this film just did not have that to me. You know, if you've seen the film by now, when you see him going over to uh, Wesley Snipes characters uh, base of operations just some of the stuff that they was doing in that scene just did not fit the mold in this film to me and it just kind of like felt out of place like they were just trying too hard to be funny and that just wasn't the case with the first film and I, I know I, I'm I, I I, I knew it wasn't going to be as good, you know, but it, it just like it, it just d didn't come remotely close. And I'm just really frustrated about it. Now, there were some good things about this film. Like I said earlier, there were a few moments where I did chuckle and I did laugh. But if I were to say that this film was hilarious, like the first film, that would be a lie. But some of the, th the best things that I liked about this were the one on one conversations that some of the characters had amongst themselves that was the best part because it felt warm it felt true it felt pure you, you know it felt like it, it had some love behind it some thought you know but other than that when a bunch of characters are just coming together and they're trying to do these dance sequences and things you know it just seemed like some cheap music video and I, I just didn't like it i mean the one of the opening one of the opening scenes in the first film where akeem is being introduced to his wife played by or his wife to be played by vanessa bell calloway y'all remember her oof, oof, bark like a dog i mean they tried to redo a number of those scenes and it just didn't come remotely close, you know, and I can go on and on and on. But I feel like I would be, you know, beating a dead horse or it would be a broken record. You know, as far as my rating is concerned, I would give this a six out of ten. Um, I was going to give it a five out of ten. But there was something that happened at the end um, that I did like. You know, but at the same time, you know, make sure you check the uh, post credit scene um, because there is a post credit scene at the very end. And it was another rehash. A uh, very unnecessary rehash of the first film and I, I didn't laugh it just it just wasn't funny to me R the, you know the Randy Watson coming in here just wasn't as funny the barbershop scenes just wasn't as funny I mean I, I don't know I was frustrated and I struggled to watch this thing it took me four times to watch this thing you know I kept stopping it and just because I was just clocking out and I wasn't interested but like I said guys I'm going to give this thing a 6 out of 10. But thank you for tuning in. That is just my opinion. If you like the video, please give me that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and follow me on social media. But guys, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.